Turn to Isaiah chapter 61. No, turn to Psalm 69. That's where we're going to start. Psalm 69. As you go there, let me go back to these uh, first verses that I had up on the screen a while ago. Uh, last Sunday morning, God laid it on my heart to uh, preach a message about the type of bondage that people get in. And I had something in my mind that I felt that I felt maybe God wanted us to do as a church, uh, or at our church, or with our church, to reach out to this area. You know, it's one thing when you look at the map out here by the restrooms and see all the places where people are, are being reached by our online ministry. Um, it blesses me, it's, it gives me a lot of joy, it helps me understand that God really is using this church. And I love the different people, we love the people that we've met that come in from homecoming, we have them come in from literally all over, all over the country, and we'll, we'll still have, we've got people that have told us they're going to come in and visit different times this year, we've got a family uh, one of our good friends is coming from Salt Lake City. They're going to come visit with us, and we have others. Uh, we try to go to places where some of these people are. We have the, um, the uh, Prophecy Conference there in Indiana every October, and uh, we're hoping that um, uh, what's going on with Lisa won't interfere with that, but they understand that if we, we don't not able to make that. We're reaching out. All throughout Kenya, um, there in Turkana, in Samburu, we have literally thousands of people listening to us on both radio stations. The pastors that are in those areas, they're behind us. They are helping us with our ministry over there. They're helping reach out to people. They're telling people, hey, listen to this particular radio station. And that's, that's wonderful. That's Fantastic. We could have never, ever foreseen that God would do something like that. But I love America. I love Jefferson County. I love Missouri. I love the area that I live in. These are our people. And we know that our own people have problems. And that your neighbors, my neighbors, your family members, my family members are locked in chains of bondage to sin. And it's not going away by itself. And I'm going to say this. It is not the government's responsibility to teach morality and what's right and what's wrong. Do you see the lights flickering? Listen, it would not surprise me if the electricity just went out. Thursday, when I got ready to do Pastor Mike online, I, as soon as I got ready to talk, the software crashed. So I had to restart that. And then I started in talking, and all of a sudden the internet went out. That happens all the time when I do that. So I'm used to it. So those of you online, if all of a sudden the feed, we already have a problem with our feed because Facebook has shut my, one of my pages down that we broadcast through. Facebook shut it down. I don't know why they did it. So I'm going to have to look into it today to figure out what's going on. I suspect somebody made a false complaint against that particular page and Facebook took it down based upon that complaint. That's, that's my guess. So we have enemies. Some of them are physical, but our real enemies are spiritual enemies. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are our enemies. So anyway, it wouldn't surprise me if the electricity went out and the internet went out and everything just fell apart. But we're going to have church anyway. Amen? Um, but what I was saying was, 
we have people in our families, in our neighborhoods that are in bondage. We have people sitting in this church that at one time you were in bondage. You, you might have been into drugs. You might have been into alcohol. You might have been into pornography. You might have been into just any, any kind of, they call it addiction. But what it really is, it is the lust of the flesh that has locked you in chains of bondage. Is what it really is. And I mentioned this last week. It is not the government's responsibility. It is not any other earthly organization's responsibility to help. It is the church's responsibility. And I said this last Sunday and I'm going to say it again. You can go to AA. And you can let AA deliver you from drinking alcohol. And then for the rest of your life, you'll never take a drink. But then you can still die and go to hell. What good then has it done? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. So I think, and I'm convinced, that the, the only real way to help people who are in chains of bondage to addictions, whatever they want to call it, the only real way is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only real way to help people. Because then God not only works in their life to bring them out of the bondage they're in, but then He saves them so that when they die, they can have eternal life and never have to worry about that ever again. They say once a drunk, always a drunk. You know what? I, I believe that. I believe that some people deal with that and it's an issue with them every day of their life. But if they have Jesus in their heart, when they die, they will never ever have to worry about that ever again. Psalm 68 verse 6, God said it to solitary in families, and he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Psalm 73, 6. Therefore pride com compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. These are the chains that people are in. And last Sunday morning, I, I mentioned Christ here in Luke chapter 4. Basically saying the reason why he came to this earth was to preach deliverance to the captives and set at liberty them that are bruised. To bring people out of the chains of the bondage that they're in is the reason why Christ came to this earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Then I went through the, all the different things you can be hooked into. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, wrath, seditions, heresies, drunkenness. Envyings, railings, revelings, things like that. These are things that people get addicted to. And we're talking about basically the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And who here does not have a problem with any of those? We all do. So, uh, where did I tell you to go? Psalm 69. Let's read that and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Psalm 69. I actually had, I have something in my mind that I'm going to, I didn't say it last week, but I'm going to say it this week because I actually had a second witness. I, I deliberately did not say to people what I had in mind while I was preaching this last Sunday and... This week, somebody else suggested, they heard the sermon and they said, you know, I think this church ought to do such and such. And I went, what? Say that again. 
I think this church ought to do such and such. And I said, that is exactly what I had in my mind. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. Remember what Samuel said to Saul? To obey is better than sacrifice. And that's what he's saying here. To magnify God with thanksgiving and to please the Lord is better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. Better than a sacrifice. The humble shall see this, verse 32, and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. God does not despise those who are addicted. God doesn't despise them. Society does, and for good reason. Usually people who are addicted to drugs do terrible things because of the drugs. People that are drunks do terrible things because they're drunks. There was a guy up in St. Louis and he actually got away with it. He was so drunk, he was visiting, he had a hotel room downtown, he went out and got drunk, went back to the hotel room, and opened the door, which surprised him because he thought he needed his key, but the door wasn't locked, so he went in to his hotel room and laid down, and there was a 13-year-old girl in that bed. The problem was, it wasn't his hotel room. And he raped that 13-year-old girl while he was drunk. And you know, they found him not guilty. They do terrible things. But Christ died for them. Each one of us has probably done terrible things. Maybe not quite that bad. But God sent his son Jesus to die for us. He despised us not as prisoners. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 16. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. And the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. He was not ashamed of my chain. I want to go to the Lord in prayer and you just bear with me while I just kind of lay out what's in my heart. Heavenly Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for my Savior. I thank you for loving me. And Father, I know for a fact, I know beyond any shadow of any doubt that you are a God full of mercy. A God full of grace. The grace and the mercy that you've manifested in my life is unmeasurable the things that you have blessed me with father there is not there is no way I deserve any of it and yet you've given it to me and father I truly believe that the life that you have caused me to live was for a reason that I never, ever, ever forget the thorns that were in my flesh, the pit 
that I had dug for myself that I was in. The chains of bondage that I was in that you've brought me out of. I never forget those chains. I never forget that pit. Never forget those thorns. Because, Lord, they're always there as a reminder to me that you love sinners. So, Father, I need help preaching this message. I don't know how to preach it, don't know what to say. So I'm asking, Lord, for your help and for your grace this morning so that I could be a blessing to these people so that they, in turn, could go and be a blessing to others. So, Father, I ask the Lord for your help. I ask you to bless the message, bless our church. Father, thank, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to continue to bless those four children in Kenya. Father, I thank you for that. I don't think I've thanked you enough for what you did there. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you bless Michael and bring him back safely. Bless his family. Bless our church, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Um, Psalm 79, I'm just going to go through some scriptures here. Um, and maybe that will help explain where my heart is and where my head is. Psalm 79, if you would turn there. Verse 9, help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us. And I want you to notice this, and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Let me ask you a question. Just those of us sitting here, those of you online, you, would, you could probably answer if you wanted to. When God first saved you, did he completely drive away all of your sinful nature all at once the day he saved you? No. He didn't. And in most cases, he doesn't. If you uh, turn to uh, John 15, take your Bible, turn to John 15. I'll show, I'll show you a double witness to that. John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he does what? Purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now John it was our was our vineyard guy. He worked at a vineyard, so he knows about all this. John, stick your head out the window here for a second. There you go. He's the man upstairs this morning. So, John, when you're working with vines, do you just all in one day purge all the vines all at once and get it over with? It takes a while. Huh? Months. And that's during the growing season, right? Then in the wintertime, they just kind of just kind of hang out there until the growing season happens again. Then you find another vine that's not producing anything, and you do what to it? You know, the short answer was, he purges it. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. God did not deliver everything that's wrong in your life. He does not take it all away all at once. God has patience on those that are his vineyard. He works with them. He understands them. He knows them. He knows when he's, he, God knew the day that he saved you 
that you, in fact, would sin again after he saved you. So why did God save you to begin with? Because he loved you. And he knew that he could work with you over time to purge what's in your life. Who's, who in here has been saved more than 10 years? Raise your hand. Who's been saved more than 20 years? Raise your hand. More than 30 years? Raise your hand. Do you still have purging for God to do in your life? Yes. Takes time. And if God is the one purging, He's, remember, we don't purge ourselves. God does that. So, for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge. God, you purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Notice that he mentions the prisoners here. The sighing of the prisoner. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. God, that's us. We're the prisoners that are appointed to die. And yet we want God to save us. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold unto their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. You are a work of God. God has patience with you. God knows what he's going to do with you. God knows the exact day that he's going to deliver you from this. And then God knows the exact day that he's going to deliver you from that. So if God, let's say that, um, well, I'm going to make something up here. Let's say that Ron here smokes marijuana. You don't smoke marijuana. That's why I said, let's pretend Ron smokes marijuana. And Ron struggles with it. Ron wants God to deliver him from it. He's tried to stop, but he can't do it. So God has the exact day picked out that he's going to say, this is the day Ron becomes free from marijuana. So let's say that that day is 10 years from now. Whose vine are you? God's. If God then knows the day that he's going to finally do this in your life, don't you think that God will have mercy on you all the way up to that day? He will, won't he? If he wasn't, God would have picked an earlier day. But he's got a day where he's going to do that, and up until that time... His grace is going to be sufficient in your life. Psalm 102. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and despise not their prayer. The destitute are the people who have issues that they beg God take it out of their life. They're the, they're the destitute. He will regard the prayer of the destitute. I have a guy that calls me every week. Every week. And I like this guy. Because he's all the time saying, Pastor Hoggart, I'm really struggling with some sins. And I don't want to go to hell. And he said, sometimes I do good. And sometimes I don't. He said, Pastor, I really don't want to go to hell. And I said, you've asked God to deliver you from all this, right? He said, yeah. And I said, so if you ask God to deliver this from you, can you deliver yourself from it? He said, no, I've tried. I said, 
they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I said, God has a day picked when he's going to deliver you from this. And I promise you, God's going to have mercy on you every single day until the day that he purges this out of your life. Now, he'll chasten you, he'll use a rod against you, he'll chastise you. But he's got a day picked where he's going to do this. And I have to tell him that every week. I have to remind him of that every week. Verse 18, this shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven, did the Lord behold the earth. Look at verse 20, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death. The groaning of the prisoner are those who want to be delivered from heroin. Or meth, or marijuana, or Jack Daniels, or pornography, or whatever it is. They're the prisoners that groan and say, God, please take this away from me. Verse 21, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way he shortened my day. Don't you look at verse 23. He weakened my strength in the way. I want you to look at that verse. That ver I've been saying this for years. God did not pick the strong. He picked the weak so he could be strong in them. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Psalm 142. Boy, I'm reading a lot of Psalms, ain't I? Psalms in the medicine chest. Did you watch Pastor Mike online Thursday? Is that a no? Yes, it's a no. I didn't want to I didn't want to talk Thursday. I didn't want to do anything. And God reminded me, Mike, you tell everybody else to go to the Psalms. Physician, heal thyself. Mike, take your own medicine. Psalm 142, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for thee? I want you to understand this. If you've ever had an addiction, the devil laid the snare for you. And you got caught, didn't you? There always had to be a first time to drink alcohol. Always had to be a first time, wasn't there? Now, honestly, there are some people who can take a drink of alcohol, put it down, walk away from it, and never want it the rest of their life. But there are some people that after that first drink, they can never, they can't stop. I, I know a couple if I mentioned the name, you would know them. I know a couple that they both fell into drinking heavily. When it came time for him to quit, he quit. He's quit. Came time for his wife to quit. She couldn't do it. Her body had this physical reaction to alcohol. 
the devil laid a trap for her to walk in it, and she walked in it. Hooked for life. She's one of those that has to be careful what cold medicine she takes, what recipes. She goes to a restaurant to make sure that nothing is cooked in alcohol because she'll, she'll have a reaction to it. Um, verse 4, I looked on my right hand and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver and here's what this means. Man cannot help you. Man cannot help you. God can. So verse 6, attend unto my cry, for I'm brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Whiskey stronger than you are. Marijuana stronger than you are. Heroin stronger than you are. Meth is stronger than you are. Pornography stronger than you are. Adultery, chasing after women. Those things are stronger than you are. You can't tell them no. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall comp compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Uh, let me, what time is it? I better move on. Psalm 146, look at verse 7. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widows. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Zechariah 9, 11. Look at what he says here. Zechariah chapter 9. As for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Lindsay, name of the message, prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Let's see here. Man, I've got so much here. Here's what I got in mind. I would like to, one night a week, hold a, I'm not sure what to call it, but it, it's going to be an addictions program, like on a Thursday night. And it's not just going to be for drunks. It's not just going to be for dopers. It'll be for anybody who's addicted to something. One night a week, sitting together in a group, talking, them sharing, but... It will be led by the scriptures. I'm not going to say seek out a higher power. I'm going to say if Jesus won't help you, you're not going to get help. That's what I'd like to do. Somebody else said that very thing this week. And I heard about it that we ought to have a program here at our church where we reach out to addicts and help them with their addictions by giving them the gospel. Somebody else said that. Somebody who themselves is an addict. Now, there may be somebody in this church who needs that okay if you need it don't let your pride talk you out of it if you need it don't let the pride of uh oh this church is going to find out that I've been doing something wrong excuse me you're in church we know you're doing something wrong. You're in church, right? It's 
So maybe, maybe somebody here has a problem with alcohol. Maybe somebody here has a problem with drugs. Maybe somebody here is hooked on porn. And let me say this. With the technology that I know was coming, they're going to start putting things in people's brains. I, I'm not making this up. David, am I making this up? David knows. I'm not making this up. Ron, they will be able to put things in people's brains that where they'll be able to access the internet. And if you think people are hooked on porn now, wait till they start beaming it directly into their brains. That's coming. And if you think people if you think people are hooked on like stuff like methamphetamine and opiates, things like that, wait till they start stimulating parts of your brain that give you that naturally. That's coming. We're, we're headed into a time when the devil is literally going to give everybody everything they ever wanted. It's going to destroy them. Solomon had it. And he said it was vexation. It was a waste. Vanity of vanities. I wished I'd never done that. And I want our church. I'm not talking about somebody else's program here. I'm talking about our own way of helping people who have addictions with the gospel of Jesus. Does not this word have power? Then let's start using this word to give power to people who don't have power. Okay? That's my idea. So I want to pray about it. I got a second witness because somebody else already brought it up and I went, what? Did I say that? They said, no, you didn't say that. That's exactly what I had in mind. So I want us to, I want us to bow our head this morning And um, what? And my plan is every session that we do will be audio recorded, not video, but audio recorded, and we'll make it available in its own area online, so that we can help not just people here but people all over the world. The four children that we rescued from Kenya, both of their parents were drug addicts. Their mom died of a heroin overdose. There was a, um, a baseball player, a pitcher for the Angels that they found, he was multi-million dollars. They found him dead in his hotel room, died of drug overdose. It happens to everybody. And I want to help. So I want you to pray. Uh, I want to open up the benches, the altars this morning. If somebody wants to come down here and pray, I'll come down here and pray with you. But I want us to pray that we can help people who need help.